दर्शति पुत्रं अत्रूपम रूपम तस्ग्रजामुरीपुरी माथुरी गोष्ठवाति रर्कुंदमगिरीवरम अहोराजकमसम प्रतीत कृपया श्री गुरु तम नोस् गुरव गौरचंद्राय राधिकाय तदाले कृष्णा कृष्ण भक्ताय तद्भक्ताय नमो नम आनंदलीलमाय विग्रहाय हेम दिव्यचावी सुंदराय तस्म महाप्रेम रस प्रदाय चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नमस्ते चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नमस्ते चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नमस्ते फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई बाउ डाउन एंड ऑफर माय हार्ट लाइक फ्लावर्स थाउजेंड्स ऑफ टाइम्स एट द लोटस फीट ऑफ माय स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर माय वर्शिपेबल गुरु देव अस्मदेव परमराज तम गुरु पाद पद्म नित्य लीला प्रविष्ट ओम विष्णु पाद अष्टोत्तर सत शिष्य माद रूपानुगाचार्य वर्य शील भक्ति वेदांत नारायण गोस्वामी महाराज secondly i have for my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my guru's guru and his guru and all of our spiritual masters going back thousands of years to sri krishna himself and finally i have for my pranam to all of my very dear brothers and sisters vanchakal puturu besta कृपास इन द बेयर विद आवर वंशी लगदेव जी इन द ब्रह्म संहिता ब्रह्म संहिता एंड देयर इट इज सेड प्रेमंजनचुरीत भक्ति विलोचन संतक सदव हृदय विलोकय यम श्याम सुंदरम अचिंत गुणस्वूप गोविंद आदिपुरुष तम हम भजा आई वर्शिप दि आदिपुरुष दि ओरिजिनल सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड हु हेज अ ब्यूटिफुल फॉर्म Uh, like a coward boy his name is krishna or govinda brahma samhiti govorita ya služu verkhovnoy lichnosti gospoda chiye ime to ukrashen avlini perom chiye ime govinda this is not working there's no sound coming but not in front of the mic yeah like this <laughs> So <laughs> that Govinda it is Govinda is there any proof that he exists or not существует ли какое-нибудь доказательство того что этот Говинда вообще существует Сантакса дейва ридаейшу вилокаянт yes да he is seen in the hearts of the great sages его видят в своих сердцах великие мудрецы whose spiritual eyes have been smeared with the ointment of love чьи глаза умощены бальзамом любви if someone has a disease of the eyes by which they cannot see clearly then in ayurveda there's a ointment that you can smear on the eyes and then you'll have very clear vision если кто-то нечёткое видение имеет то айурведа предлагает такую мазь которую на намазывают на веки и она про про So it doesn't matter how good the doctor is or how good his ointment is. There's no ointment that can make you see so clearly that you see Krishna. 
Но не имеет значения, что за болезнь у вас или что за лекарство вы принимаете. Ничего не поможет вам увидеть Кришну. But there's a special type of doctor, not Ayurvedic doctor, but Vedic doctor. That is Sri Guru. And when we serve our spiritual master, he can smear our spiritual eyes with the ointment of Prem, pure love. And then at that point, one can see the beautiful form of Krishna continuously within the heart. Sri Lai Jiva Goswami part, he said that if you present a logical argument, then it can be refuted by another logical argument. But Anubhav, that means realization, divine realization, it cannot be refuted by anything. It is a pratyaksh, it, it's a direct spiritual perception. So it doesn't require any other praman, any other evidence to support it. So Yamshama Sundaram Achintigunas Rupam. They see the form of Krishna, Shama Sundar. That means his complexion is like a fresh rain cloud. Они видят эту форму Шьяма Сундара, чей цвет тела напоминает грозовое облако. And he's standing in the crooked way, playing his flute. И он стоит так изогнутом, в изогнутой форме и играет на флейте. So we want to have such an experience. И мы все хотим получить этот облак. We want to attain this prem. Хотим получить эту прему. So prem, it comes when we chant the holy names purely, without offense. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadev Goswami has said, Tadasvasaram vridayam bhathedyam yad griyamana harinamadeya na vikrite tata yada vikaro netrei galam jalam gatra ruhei shuharsha if a person is uh, chanting the holy name of Krishna, but he does not experience that his hairs are standing on it, that tears are coming to the eyes, and that the heart is melting, that the heart is melting. Heart, he is melting. Yeah, if he doesn't experience that the heart is melting, then oh, it's to, to be considered that that person's heart is as hard as the Bajra. Bajra is a very hard type of stone. Or oh, Vajra also can mean a thunderbolt. A thunderbolt is so hard that it can crack the stone mountain even. So how hard is the thunderbolt? So if when a person is chanting the holy names, then they don't experience the symptoms, the horripilation of the body, tears coming to the eyes and the heart melting, then the heart is very, very hard. Поэтому, если человек не испытывает всех этих ощущений, у него не становятся волосы дыбом, слезы не текут из глаз, он э, голос не дрожит, то значит, что сердце этого человека, оно подобно камню. The melting of the heart is the symptom of love. Это таяние сердца – один из симптомов любви. Ручи бичи та масленья. Ручи бичи та масленья. Самят масленья та асонто, мамата тишанки та. The symptom of love. The first transcendental emotion is the melting of the heart and then when it's completely melted 
and imbued with a feeling of possessiveness. Oh Krishna, you are mine, you are mine. Then it's called love. Шарупа Госвами Падам пишет, Ручи Берчита Машриня, когда это сердце тает, когда оно полностью наполняется э, любовью, тогда приходит чувство обладания О Кришна, ты мой. Then that person, they cannot think of Krishna separately from thinking of Krishna's happiness. И с этого момента человек, он не может думать о Кришне отдельно от э, счастья, которое Кришна должен испытывать. Поэтому, если человек не имеет любви, он думает, о, это все эти вещи, это Бог. But when the brain comes, the love comes, the heart starts to melt, then you cannot think, there's this thing called, you can only think of, how can I please Krishna? Krishna and pleasing him cannot be a separate thought. It's the same. If you don't have love, you can think, oh, Krishna's lotus feet are very beautiful. But when love comes, you can only think, oh, Krishna's lotus feet are so soft when he's walking. Perhaps he will step on a stone. Ow! I cannot tolerate it. He might step on some sharp grass when he's running in the forest. Он может наступить на острую траву, на, на солому или на камни, когда он бродит по, по, по лесу. Why is he doing this crazy cow herding business? Почему он занимается этим вообще бессмысленным таком, э, hmm? бизнесом поступов? I have decorated a very beautiful uh, forest bower and covered the floor with all soft lotus petals. His feet should come here to my kunj. Я украсил э, прекрасную кунджу э, э, лепестками цветов. Он должен прийти сюда, в мою кунджу. That means not, uh, not primarily mine. That means кунджа of Radha. Это не означает, что это моя кунджа. But Radhika is mine, so it's same thing. Что это кунджа Радики, но так как Радика она моя, то это кунджа тоже моя. But the feet of Krishna, they feel so much separation from Radha. That cannot be cooled down even by the touch of the flower petals. Only if his lotus feet will be on the heart of Radhika, then he'll be happy. No, so love means that you cannot think randomly of some abstract Krishna. But it means you have Tatsuka Suki Bhav. Это означает, что у нас есть уже татсука суки баб. Татсук means that his suk happiness. Татсука означает его счастье. Тат означает то, что счастье. And suki means one who is happy. And suki означает тот, кто счастлив. So when the heart melts, that means you become татсука суки, the person who is only happy when Krishna is happy. И когда сердце тает, то это значит, что вы становитесь татсука суки, то есть вы становитесь те, той личностью, которая счастлива когда, только тогда, когда Кришна счастлива. So, it is a great transcendental mystery and the greatest secret of all the Vedas, that if someone will chant the name of Krishna without offense, their heart will melt and they become overwhelmed. Татсука суки бхав. Oh, Krishna, I cannot be happy unless you are happy. И это трансцендентная такая э, тайна всех вед, потому что э, только в этом случае, когда Кришна счастлив, преданный становится счастлив. So the question comes, huh? many persons are chanting, but whose heart is melting? Вопрос возникает, так много личностей воспевают святое имя, mm -hmm. но чье же сердце тает от этого воспевания? The scriptures advertise, chant the name of Krishna and you will get love. But is it this advertisement true or not? 
Who is experiencing it? Веде они так рекламируют, воспевайте святое имя, и вы будете счастливы. Но кто же чувствует это счастье? Кто э, переживает эту любовь? So, is the scripture true or not? Являются ли э, утверждения описаний hmm? истинными или нет? Absolutely. Да, you это... cannot question, is the Veda true or not? Вы не, мы, не, мы не должны задавать, задавать такой вопрос, mm -hmm. веды являются истиной. Веды means knowledge, that comes from God. God is perfect, his knowledge is perfect. Веда означает знание, но это знание исходит от Господа. Господь совершен, и это знание тоже совершенно. You know that once there was a great pandit, his name was Kumarel Bhatta. Один, uh, был один пандит, его звали Kumarel Bhatta. And uh, he was, he had very strong faith in the Vedas. And he was very upset that Buddhists were going here and there in India and uh, criticizing the Vedas, saying the Vedas are not true. So he made a plan how to uproot and defeat the Buddhist philosophy. So the, the first step in defeating some philosophy is you have to learn what that philosophy is. So he enrolled himself in the Buddhist University of Jalanda. And he studied there for many years. And then when he knew all the details of uh, Buddhist philosophy, like Shunyavad, the theory of uh, uh, emptiness. Like Asatkaryavad, the theory that uh, the effects appear without any cause. The theory of Chanik Vigyanavad, that each moment of your consciousness is a uh, appearing and then disappearing uh, but it's not connected to the previous thoughts actually today many persons say i am buddhist i am but actually they don't know the buddhist philosophy at all и сегодня очень многие говорят, я буддист, я за ними практикую буддизм, но они не понимают философию буддизма. They just like the statues of bald men sitting. Они просто смотрят, как там Будда сидит. With the big belly and happy face. So, but he studied the philosophy, and then in that university he began to refute all the ideas. И Участь в этом университете, он стал потихонечку, потихонечку все эти идеи опровергать. So the students there of the Buddhist guru became very angry. They wanted to kill him. Студенты, которые учились вместе с ним на курсе, они разозлились на него очень сильно и даже собрались убить его. So they took him to the top of a very high tower. Они подняли его на на высокую башню. And they told him. You should deny the truth of the Vedas, otherwise we'll throw you off this building. Say the Vedas are not true. So then he very boldly said to them, hmm? I will never deny the Vedas. Hmm? So you can throw me from the roof, I don't care. If the Vedas are true, I will not be injured. His faith was like that. Is your faith like that? So you have to have a sort of very strong conviction in the Vedas like this if you want to make progress in spiritual life. He said, if the Vedas are true, then I will not be injured at all. So then they thought, oh, well, this, we've easily won this debate. <laughs> Let's throw him off, he'll be dead, we won't have to deal with him anymore. Because they don't believe in Vedas. Okay. So they threw him off, 
And he fell down. Boom. And then he just got up and dusted himself. <laughs> no injury at all except for his finger was broken. And then those Buddhists, they were astonished. How did he stay alive? Hmm? But uh, actually he said he would not be injured, but his finger was broken only. So then he said, oh, my finger was broken because I made a mistake. What, what was that mistake? I used the word if. <laughs> you don't use the word if in relation to the Vedas. If the Vedas are true. It's making it conditional. If, if means maybe. The possibility, you cannot use the word if in, re in regard to the Vedas. He said, so this is my mistake because I used the word if in the same sentence of the Vedas, so my finger was injured. <laughs> so, don't have uh, any doubt in Ved Shastra. So what is the very deepest teaching of the Vedas? They're saying that if you chant the holy names of Krishna, your heart will melt and you attain divine love. So is it true or not? Of all the practices of bhakti, the best is Nam Sankirtan, chanting the holy name. If a person chants without offense, they will get praying. So the conclusion is, what is advertised in the Vedas about the power of the name, it must be true. So if we are not experiencing that divine love, then according to this formula, it must be that we are committing some offense to the name. Because if you chant without offense, the praying will come. So, the most important thing that we can do in our life is when we are chanting the holy names under the guidance of our spiritual master, we should try to understand what are the apparats, the offenses, the obstacles that prevent us from experiencing the power of the holy name. So, in this Kali Yuga, Krishna Himself comes to teach us how to chant. See, Krishna Himself, absorbed in the loving mood of Radha and adorned with the beauty of her golden complexion, appeared in this world as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Navadutta. In order to propagate the pure chanting of the holy names. So one day, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was walking along the shore of the ocean. Every day at this time. <laughs> He was walking along the shore of the ocean with his associates. Uh -huh. And at that time, he wanted to explain to them the secret of chanting. 
И тогда он решил объяснить своим спутникам секрет воспевания. He said, in the Padma Purana, there is a section called the Swarga Kanda. So in in chapter forty eight of the Swarga Kanda of the Padma Purana, there is a section called Nam Rahasya, the mystery, the the confidential secrets of the holy name. No, Padma Purana, Swarga Kanda, chapter 48. Nam Rahasya. Which means? Translation. The secrets of the holy name. The confidential secret or mystery of the holy name. So there, it is a conversation between Sutta Goswami and Shona Karishi. And in that dialogue, Sutta Goswami is describing another dialogue between Sanat Kumar and Narad Muni. And there, Sanat Kumar describes that there are ten obstacles which prevent us from experiencing the divine love for Krishna from chanting the holy name. So these are called Dasa Aparad. The word Aparad is generally translated as offense. But that does not really convey the essence of the word. For example, if you park in a no parking zone, then this is a parking offense. So we'll have to look at the word aparad. What does it mean? The word radha means pleasure. And apa means down or it means away. So that which vanquishes the pleasure of Krishna is called aparad, which which makes Krishna's pleasure go down or which makes the the pleasure of Krishna go away. That really means Krishna's happiness is not affected by us, but our ability to please Him becomes diminished or vanquished. So it is called aparad. So what pleases Krishna is only the tatsu kasuki bhav, the feeling that my happiness is your happiness. That is love. То, что доставляет наслаждение Кришне, это татсука суки бав, это то, что доставляет им. So aparad is the opposite of that. We can say aparad means anti-love. Aparad означает как раз прямо противоположное, или же это анти-любовь. So there are ten the dispositions or activities. Which are anti-love, which are contrary to the principle of pure love for God, and if we hold these within ourselves, if they are part of our disposition, then when we chant the holy name, we cannot experience the effect. И вот эти десять принципов, которые отдаляют любовь к Кришне или которые уменьшают ощущение Кришны, ощущение любви Кришны, они они же ощущают, уменьшают наши ощущения. So the holy name is like the sun, always shining, always powerful. Святое имя оно сияющее, подобно солнцу. But the aparads, the ten offenses, they are like dark clouds in the sky, 
The sun is always shining, but you cannot experience the power of, of the sun because you are covered by these dark clouds. So when we uh, give up these ten uh, anti-loving dispositions, that means the cloud separates and then the sun of the holy name shines into our life. А эти аппараты, они подобны э, тучам, которые закрывают это солнце и мешают нам увидеть mm -hmm. его яркий свет. И когда эти тучи, они расходятся, то тогда э, солнце, оно являет свое сияние. So, Sanut Kumar, he said, Satam ninda nam nam parama paramam aparadam bitanutei yatakya tim yatam usahatei tadvigarham Shivasya Sri Vishnu Yahya Gunanama Di Sakalam Diya Binna Pasyat Sakalu Hari Nama Hitakara Guru Avagya Suti Shasta Nindanam Tadatava Do Hari Nam Nikalpanam Nam No Baladyasa Hi Papa Bodhi Navindate Tase Yama He Should He Dharma Brata Tyaga Hutari Sarava Shubakriya Samyam Api Pramada Asradadane Vinute Asadane Vinute Apiasrinvati Yastopodesha Shiva Nama Paradaha Shutta Pi Nama Mahatmam Ya Priti Rahito Damaha Aham Mamadi Paramo Namni Sopya Parada Krit So these are the description of ten offenses to the holy name. Это описание десяти аппарат святого десяти оскорблений святого. So we should study them one by one, and if we can give them up, then we'll experience the nectar of love for Krishna. Поэтому каждый должен изучить эти десять аппарат и освободиться от от них одни одно за другим, и тогда мы будем испытывать. And you will notice as you are hearing. You will feel, oh, yes, yes, I have that attitude. И вы заметите, когда вы будете изучать эти аппараты, что при воспевании... Knowingly or unknowingly. And then by this, so this is blocking my experience of the name. Осознанно или неосознанно, вот такое воспевание, оно блокирует... Then you can leave it. ...мою встречу со святым именем. И мы сможем тогда избавиться от таких вот препятствий. And then, slowly, slowly, the clouds covering the name will disappear. So, first of all, Satam ninda namna paramam aparadam bitanute yata kya tim yatam katam husahate tadvigarham. It means to do ninda, to criticize or to minimize or to disrespect Satam, pure devotees. Первое из них это критиковать или порицать каким-то образом преданного, посвятившего себя преданному служению. Антин и Данди Байдуэйсти, it is said in the Shastra that there are six ways that you can commit offense to a devotee. Vaishnava na birandati. Шастры предупреждают, что существует шесть путей оскорбления преданного. And the the most severe is to kill a saint. Don't kill any saints. И первое из них это не не убивайте. Sometimes it happens. Иногда это происходит. Sometimes there's a saint, and he's speaking some very profound philosophy which is so much against the worldly ideas that the people turn against him and try to kill him. Yeah. Have you heard of someone named Jesus Christ? Иногда так происходит, когда святые они говорят какую-то истину, которая противоречит обычному укладу материалистических людей, когда они пытаются каким-то образом помешать этой проповеди. Раману Джайчария. Это произошло с Раманом Джайчарием. Actually, almost all the great saints you see that throughout their history, the general people of the world turned against them and tried to kill them. Мы можем видеть, что в основном в истории происходит так, что обычные люди они пытаются помешать. So you you have to understand that the true path of spiritual life 
is not all oh, flowers, rainbows and unicorns and butterflies. Поэтому мы должны понять, что это духовная жизнь, это не только бабочки, не только радуга, не только The true path of the saints is from the material perspective very challenging, very difficult. Потому что истинный путь святых, он очень труден и очень сложен. Because we are living in the world of Maya, the world of illusion. Потому что мы живем в мире Майи, в мире иллюзий. And the, the inhabitants of the world of illusion are very attached to that illusion. They don't want to let it go. А обитатели этого, этой иллюзии, они очень привязаны к ней, они не хотят с ней расставаться. So, when a person is uh, not speaking the truth, everyone welcomes, oh, he's so wonderful. But when a person is speaking the truth, many people become angry and there's so much aggression against them. Because truth is revolutionary in the world of Maya. Потому что истина, она революционна в мире Майи. That's why many saints are actually martyrs. И это то, почему множество святых было казнено. So, also it sometimes happens that when a person is very advanced, Then there may be others who are also on the path of spiritual life, and they become envious towards that person, seeing that uh, their learning, their humility, their service, their influence on others, everything is so unprecedented that they become jealous. И также бывают такие случаи, когда в обществе святых один является очень выдающимся и сияющим, и тогда остальная часть этого этого общества святых начинает завидовать ему. So it is said in the Mahabharat that the current of of the river of Maya moves faster at the edges, at the shore. В Махабарате говорится, что поток реки, он движется быстрее у берега. That means that if someone is in the river of this flow of birth and death in the material world, and they're trying to get out, then the effect of the gunas become, as they approaching the shore, that means they're about to come out of the material world, the flow of the gunas is more powerful there. And this is why you will see that when those who are trying to become elevated in spiritual life, the higher they go, it can become very, very difficult and very controversial. And sometimes some terrible things happen because the flow by the edge of illusion is much more powerful than in the middle. Это подобно реке, в которой в середине очень медленное течение, и если кто-то захочет выбраться из этой реки иллюзии, то этот поток усиливается по мере того, как он приближается к берегу. So what to speak about a sadhu satam means the saints. A saint uh, will cause controversy among the materialists, but there will also be controversy among his fellow spiritualists as well, who are not liberated. И мы видим, что такие святые, они очень противоречат обществу материалистов, но также обществу святых, которые not liberated. Not liberated. Yeah, so, the, it is very important, the first thing, the first obstacle in chanting the holy names is to criticize or minimize a saint. So, Hantin in Danti Vaidvesti Vaishnavan Abhinandati One should not make a physical harm to a saint. Шатра говорит, что нельзя физически доставлять страдания. One should not try to diminish their glories by criticizing them with words. Нельзя уменьшить его славу, критикуя его словами. One should not have envy in the heart. Нельзя иметь зависть в своем сердце. Let's say you don't do anything and you don't say anything. 
лучше не говорить, ничего не делать. Ничего. But inside you are burning. This devotee. Uh, he has a big nose. This devotee. He uh, has a hole in his cloth. <laughs> Whatever. Looking for some small <laughs> defect. Искать какие-то недостатки, так или иначе, и вот с ненавистью так рассматривать. Это происходит иногда. Не то, что это происходит, это всегда nature of the enviousness, это the nature of the material world. Because the spiritual world is a land of love. If we did not have envy, we would not be here. Это происходит здесь, в материальном мире, потому что в духовном мире такого не может быть. И это та причина, по которой мы находимся здесь. So you have to check it. Мы должны всегда контролировать, это, проверять. So should not become angry. Нельзя злиться. If you see that he has made some mistake or anything by your limited material vision, don't be angry. Если мы видим, что он сделал что-то не так или что-то не доделал, то мы не должны выражать свой гнев по этому поводу. If a Vaishnava is approaching, uh, you should uh, stand up and greet him and welcome. Give offer flowers, incense, asana. So t to, to not uh, the Abhinandati means to give a welcome. It would be an offense. And okay, now you don't do anything. Uh, physical harm. You don't uh, say anything offensive. You're not feeling angry. Uh, you even welcome the Vaishnava. Может быть, вы не делаете ничего оскорбительного. Вы не говорите. Вы не не выражаете это эмоционально. Вы не. Very very fine. Very fine. It is an offense to not feel joy in your heart when you see the Vaishnava. No, это очень тонко. Если вы не чувствуете счастья, вы не чувствуете радости в сердце, когда вы видите Вайшнава, то это тоже оскорбление. О, here comes on some Maharaja. In India there's a saying, turning your umbrella. В Индии говорят, это разверни свой зонтик. It means you are walking down the street with umbrella on your shoulder. And then you saw some Vaishnava coming and you moved the umbrella to this side so you can and you can go back. Это означает, что вы идете по улице с зонтиком и видите Вайшнава, который идет на противоположный стороне, переносите зонтик на другую сторону, закрываетесь им от него. No, when you see Vaishnava, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, and give pranam. One check out, but the rupee is dark. Вы видите Вайшнава, надо сразу предложить свои пранам. Like this. So it's an offense to not feel joy in your heart seeing the devotees. Таким образом. Оскорбление даже не чувствовать счастья, радости, когда видишь преданного. So now you can take your own pulse and find out, are you committing these offenses in your life or not? Теперь мы можем положить свои пальцы на пульс и проверить, мы совершаем такие оскорбления в своей жизни. And if you are, then you have to give it up, change your life. If you want to experience the tatsuka sukibhav, the joy of only experiencing the happiness in Krishna's happiness, transcendental love. Если мы совершаем это, тогда нам надо от него избавиться. В противном случае мы не сможем прогрессировать, потому что только так сука суки бав доставляет счастье преданным, потому что он заботится о счастье Кришны. There are different levels of devotees. Существуют разные уровни преданности. So, if someone is konishta adhikari, a neophyte. Если кто-то коништа адхикари, неофит. If you make any of these offenses to the neophyte, then actually it's not aparad, it's pap. It's a sin. It's a bad karma, but it's not a nam aparad. Если это совершается в отношении конечно адикари, то это не нам аппарат, это пап, это грех. But if there's a devotee madhyam adikari, но если этот преданный madhyam adikari, who even once has chanted the name purely, который Without offense. And then he has, because if you chant without offense, then you will the pure, the light of the pure name. It will reveal the form of Krishna. Because воспевая без оскорблений, свет святого имени 
on the avid obras Krishna. So the Konishta Adhikar is not really a Vaishnava. He's called Prakrita Bhakta. He is a materialistic devotee. He is almost a Vaishnava. He's trying to be a Vaishnava, but not yet. Поэтому конечно Адхикари он не считается э, вайшнавом, он считается почти вайшнавом, э, э, вайшнавом прая, по, э, поэтому оскорбление в его отношении. So still you should not make any offense to him because uh, it will be pop, it will be a sin. Но все же And you get a very bad reaction for that. Не должны совершать оскорбления в отношении такой mm. личности, потому что это будет уже грех. Mm. And the tendency is, if you become over-familiar hmm, and negligent towards the junior devotee, you get used to that, then you do it to someone more senior, more senior. So it's like a slippery slope going to a very uh, catastrophic situation. So don't think it's a license to disrespect the, the general or new devotees, no. Молодых преданных, если мы пренебрегаем ими и стараемся только служить э, возвышенным, тогда это тоже э, очень опасно. Uh -huh. So, but who is a Vaishnava? One who has chanted purely at least once has the darshan of Krishna. So, unless and until you have the darshan of Krishna, you are not a Vaishnava. A Vaishnava is a person who has seen Krishna. Таким образом, Вайшнавом считается только та личность, которая а, хотя бы однажды э, произнесла чисто святое имя и получила Даршан Кришны. До тех пор, пока преданный не получил Даршана Кришны, его нельзя считать. So, from the stage of Nishta, then the form of Krishna begins to appear in the heart of the devotee when he's chanting. Поэтому с уровня Ништи, э, когда преданный воспевает святое, и святое имя, э, его происходят такие вещи. So, Now, in, in this Nam Rahasya, the secret of the holy name, Sanut Kumar is also uh, defining who is the Satam, who is really a Sadhu. Yatakya Tim Yatam Katam Husahatayat Vigaram means a Sadhu is that person who is spreading throughout the world the glories of the Holy Name. Only one who has actually experienced the transcendental name uh, can really spread the glory to others. Она может распространить Святое Имя по всему миру. And that is very, very pleasing to Krishna. И это очень и очень... Э, а? Доставляет большое наслаждение. Especially in this Kali Yuga, the performance of silent meditation and different types of sadhana, they don't, they're not powerful enough to purify the living entities. Мы должны понять, что в Кали-югу вот эта молчаливая медитация, она не настолько могущественна, чтобы очистить нас э, и дать осознание Кришне. Therefore, in the Brihadaradiya Purana it said, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kalo Nasteva, 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 Gatirangat. In this age of Kali, there is no other way, there's no other way, there's no alternative, there's no option, huh? but Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, the chanting of the holy names. Поэтому э, этот стих э, Хари нам, Хари нам, Хари нам, он э, утверждает, что нет другого пути, кроме воспевания святого имени для осознания э, духовной реальности. So if a person has given their whole life to chanting the names and teaching others how to chant. Если человек посвятил себе свою, э, свою жизнь э, для того, чтобы научить других воспеванию святого имени. And the living beings are suffering in it. In... With, without end in the cycle of birth and death, the only way out is this chanting. And someone is helping them get out. Then that person is doing God's work. Because their whole life is only chanting and teaching about the name, so they are poor. They have nothing. 
Потому что вся их жизнь посвящена только тому, чтобы учить людей, как освободиться из They don't care about where I will live, what I will eat, what I will wear. They depend on Krishna's mercy for everything. Они не имеют ничего, они очень бедны, они живут только милостью Кришны. So they have sacrificed their life to please Krishna. Они полностью посвятили свое имя тому, чтобы доставить удовольствие. And just like a tree who is standing in the hot sun but giving shade to others. Tolerating all difficulties in their own life, they're trying to help everybody else without thinking about themselves. И подобно дереву, которое стоит в жаркую погоду, распространяя свою тень другим, эти люди, не зря ни на что пытаются освободить от страданий. So such a person is so dear to Krishna, we cannot express it. Такая личность очень и очень дорога Кришне, и мы не можем даже никак оценить или оценить. And if you disrespect or you don't appreciate such a person who is so dear to Krishna, you think if you call Krishna's name, he'll listen to you? Impossible. Если мы оскорбляем такую личность, которая очень дорога Кришне, мы все все еще думаем, что Кришна слушает наше воспевание, когда мы это делаем. But conversely. If you will honor, if you will worship, if you will serve such a person, Krishna will be so happy. And it wants the pure name, wants to come and dance on your tongue. Krishna, I'm coming now. Прямо противоположно, если мы доставляем удовольствие Кришне и заботимся о его частичках, то Кришна очень доволен и благословляет. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Prabhu kohe Vaishnav seva nama sankirtan. Do we call O Shri Krishna Pabe Shri Krishna Charan? If you serve the the devotees and chant the holy name, then at once, very very soon, very quickly, you will attain Krishna's lotus feet. Krishna Himself will be your property. Krishna will give Himself to you. Очень искренне, очень чисто, очень почтительно воспевайте святое имя, то Кришна очень доволен и очень быстро имя явит его образ. So with each offense we should see. It's saying what you should not do, and the and the way to counteract what you should not do is the opposite of that. What what you should do, don't offend. Try to serve and honor the devotees. Then Nam will be very pleased. Противоположные. Мы должны делать то, что доставляет наслаждение Кришне, то, что нравится ему, и не делать того, чего. If by chance you make an offense. Если случайно мы совершаем оскорбление. Either deliberately or by accident. Это может быть осознанно или нет. Or even unknowingly. Случайно или. Then you should go to that Vaishnava and bow down and say, Prabhu, I am so offensive. Please forgive me. Тогда мы должны подойти к этому преданному, склониться перед его стопами и попросить прощения за свои оскорбления. And then that devotee will say, Oh, no problem. I never took any offense. It's not. It's not important. You have not offended me. Because actually, devotee never takes offense from anyone. If someone disregards him, the devotee thinks, "Oh, it's my own karma, my own foolishness." Never blame other persons for your own problems. Никогда не обвиняйте других из-за своих проблем. Even if the other person is directly making the problem in front of your eyes, don't think that they are the cause. Always think you are the cause. Поэтому не думайте, что если кто-то стоит прямо перед вами и совершает это, то он является причиной. Думайте, что причина находится в вас. Just like Sheila Haridas Thakur. Как Sheila Haridas Thakur. He was arrested by the Muslim magistrate and he was sentenced to be beaten. And while people were beating him. Then he was praying to Krishna for them. Oh, Krishna, don't punish them. They don't know what they are doing. This is my fault. I have made some offense in a previous life, and now a small reaction is coming to me in the form of this beating. Haridas Thakur was arrested by the magistrate of the Muslim Empire, and he was beaten on 22 bazaar places. But he never once thought that it was his fault or his sin. Он думал, что это моя проблема. So on all level, on every level of your life, don't criticize anyone or anything. You should think God is perfect, His world is perfect. Bas. Поэтому мы должны постараться на любом уровне жизни не обвинять никого в своих перипетиях и в своих сложностях. Don't see a fault in your husband or your wife or in your 
associates, your friends, in your country, in the politics, or anything. Don't see any fault anywhere. Oh, the bumblebees, they always go to the honey in the flower, and the flies, they always go to the other types of deposits here and there in the street. So don't have the quality of the fly, try to have the quality of the bumblebee. Don't give blame, don't ascribe blame to others, take all blame on yourself. Yeah? If your wife or husband is very difficult, you should think it's my it's my karma that they are difficult. It's not that person's fault, it's my fault. Yeah, be peaceful. If you are having problems with the devotees around you, it's not their fault, it's my fault. If you think that all the world is in such a terrible situation, then you should think it's my karma that I'm born in this world at this time. Why, why, why am I not in Satya Yuga, in the golden age? Why am I now in this Kali Yuga? Why? Your fault. Own fault. Если мы находимся в этом мире, то мы должны понять, что все, что здесь происходит, это именно моя карма. И я родился здесь для того, чтобы испытать эту карму. В противном случае я родился бы, может быть, в Сатя Югу или еще где-то. So don't give blame anywhere, take blame on yourself. Поэтому не надо обвинять никого, надо во всем обвинять самого себя. This is the formula for success in spiritual life. Это формула для успешной жизни. Сила Рагунас Бхатта Госвами. He used to say, Vaishnavera Nindikama, Mpodi Nahikani, Sabi Krishna Bhajankari, E Matarjani. He never let, what to speak of criticizing others, he never used to listen to others speaking any criticism. Raghunath Bhatta. Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, он говорил, что не то, что не позволял кому-то говорить какую-то критику, но он даже не позволял этой критике касаться своего уха. На Ипотикане он не позволял никакой критики от кого-либо или что-либо в его ухе. Почему? Потому что если вы будете в его ухе, это будет испортить ваше сердце. Мы хотим сохранить сердце чистое и чистое. Почему бы не позволить кому-то выбросить свой трэш в наше сердце через ухо? Потому что если мы позволяем кому-то... Ваше сердце не выбросит ground. Бросать эту критику в наши уши, как в помойное ведро, то мы никогда не очистимся, никаких реализаций не будет. So if anyone was speaking something negative, you would stop. Поэтому, когда кто-то что-то говорит негативное, мы должны его... Саби Кришна, Браджан, Кари, Эйматар, he would say, everyone is serving Krishna except for me. И со сложенными руками сказать, все служат Кришне, кроме меня. This is all I know. Everyone is doing fine. They all are serving Krishna except for me. I am the one who needs to be reformed, who needs to repent, and who needs to improve. So, our Parampuj Patsila Bhakti Rakshak Shida Maharaj used to say, mind your own business and surrender. Mind your own business and surrender. That means don't put your nose in what everyone else is doing. And then you can become successful in spiritual life is very short. We don't have time to make become a detective and investigate what everyone else is doing. Поэтому наша жизнь очень коротка, у нас нет времени для того, чтобы смотреть на то, что делает другой. Just so then you can talk to others about it. Ninda rasa sada pibet. Always taste the nectar of the speaking the faults of others. This is the materialistic mentality. В противном случае развивается такая привязанность к ninda rasa sada pibet, когда преданный so there's a, there's a very beautiful history in, in uh, Bhakti Ratnakar. Describing how we should be so very, very careful not to offend the devotees. So once upon a time, Srila Rupa Goswami, 
He was sitting in the forest of Vrindavan chanting the holy name. At that time, there was one uh, invalid devotee, Kanja Krishnadas, lame Krishnadas. He had an injury to his leg and he used to walk in a very funny way. And a peculiar way. And when children would see him, some they would laugh. Oh, look, he's and they would imitate him. But he used to say, they are ignorant. But one day, he was walking past Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami was chanting Harinam. And as he was chanting, he was seeing a beautiful pastime of Krishna. Eh? So Krishna is very funny. Eh? He likes to play jokes with his friends. Eh? And his friends, they play jokes on him also. Eh? Sometimes when Krishna and the coward boys, they're taking lunch together. So they open their picnic, uh, their tiffins. And they're taking out food that their mother's cooked up. Oh, my mother made this, it's so good. And they tasted, Krishna, try this. And they share food with each other. Uh -huh. So, you know, if you have a deity in a temple, then you have to offer, and after offering, then you can eat. You cannot eat first and then offer. It's a very safe apparat, very wrong. But in the spiritual world, the love is so great, they don't, they transgress all the rules and regulations out of love. Oh, this is great, Krishna, try. So they were all very eager to taste each other's most delicious preparations. So then one boy, he made a plan. He took the, the filling out of the samosa. And he put some jasmine flowers inside. So jasmine flowers look very nice, they smell very nice, but they don't taste too good. <laughs> They're very bitter. So then one boy, he was going, he was pretending to eat. Oh, this is the most delicious samosa I've ever tasted. And his friend said, let me try, let me try. No, 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 this is not for you. <laughs> oh, give it to me. And he snatched from his friend. And then to make sure that the fight would uh, not continue. <laughs> <laughs> and looking at his friend, you see? <laughs> but then when he began to chew it, the very bitter taste came. <laughs> All the boys were laughing. Uh, so then that person who had been tricked began to beat the other person and he got up and ran away and he was running after him. <laughs> So in this way, Krishna and his friends are always laughing and joking, playing together. So Rupa Goswami was chanting the holy name and relishing. And uh, seeing the beautiful pastimes of Krishna, he began to laugh. Uh, so just at that time, that Kanja Krishna was walking like this past Rupa Goswami, Rupa Goswami burst out laughing and he thought, oh, even Rupa Goswami is laughing at me. Uh, and he went away. Uh? So Rupa Goswami was seeing the pastimes of Krishna in his trance, but suddenly his trance was broken and he was chanting but not experiencing anything.
Ируба Госвами моментально потерял это видение трансцендентного мира, и он, он воспевал святого имена, имя, но ничего не происходило. So then he tried again. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. But still nothing was coming. Ируба Госвами он пробовал снова и снова, но ничего не происходило. So then he, he became very disturbed. So Sila Rupa Goswami went to his uh, Shiksha Guru, Sanatan Goswami, also that's his elder brother. He said, O oh, Prabhu, I am chanting, but the nectar of the name is not appearing in my heart. What could be the cause? Я воспеваю святое имя, но нектар святого имени не является в моем сердце. Я не вижу ничего. So Sanatan Goswami said, did you make offense to someone? Sanatan Goswami спросил, может ты кого-то оскорбил? I said, I don't recall offending anyone. Рупа Goswami сказал, нет, я никому не обращался, я ни с кем не общался. Sanatan Goswami said, perhaps you have offended someone unknowingly. Sanatan Goswami сказал, может ты кого-то оскорбил неосознанно. Then Rupa Goswami said, but if by accident, unknowingly, I offended someone, then how will I know what I have done or who I have offended? And then I'll be, ber if I don't know, I'll be bereft of the nectar of the holy name. Rupa Goswami looked at Sanatan and said, well, how can I find out who I have offended? It's not unconscious. So then Sanatan Goswami was very wise. Sanatan Goswami was very wise. He said, you should organize a Sankirtan festival. And a big feast of Prasad, Maha Prasada. And invite all the devotees in Vrindavan to come. And the one who does not come, that must be the person who felt some offense. So then, Sila Rupa Goswami told his disciple Jiva Goswami, please go all over Vrindavan, invite everyone uh, to come to our festival. Rupa Say, Goswami Rupa Goswami is inviting you to a festival. So Jiva Goswami went everywhere and the day came and many Vaishnavas happily came together to sing the holy names and sat down to take prasada. И Джива Госвами, он пригласил всех Вайшнава в Риндауна, и наступил тот день, когда все эти Вайшнавы, они собрались, и сели очень счастливо, и стали посетить просад. So then, hmm, Rupa Goswami was looking at the rows of all devotees of the taking prasadam to see who is here and who is missing. А Рупа Госвами, он стоял и смотрел, кто пришел и кого нет. So everyone was there. Все были там. Uh, except for one. Кроме одного. Hmm, it's one type of uh, praman proof, one type of evidence called above Praman. You can learn not only by seeing things, but you can learn something also by not seeing something. <laughs> That's called above Praman, absence Praman. Huh? Yes, I know none of you have a television, but most people, other people, if they go into the lounge area and they look and they see there's no television there, then they know by above Praman that someone has uh, broken into my house. <laughs> A burglar has come. <laughs> so above, you can learn by not seeing something. Not only seeing things. If you, if you see a devotee and then you notice they're not wearing a kantimala, then by a bathroom you can, oh, they have a problem in their life. Spiritual life, some problem has come. Because this is very auspicious, all Vaishnavas wear. Then you try to help them. Hmm? So, so he looked and he saw everyone was there except for Kanja Krishna Das. Поэтому Рупа Госвами взглянул на собравшиеся собравшиеся преданных и понял, что нет только одного. So he said, he said, maybe perhaps Jiva Goswami did not invite. So he went to Jiva Goswami and asked him, did you go and invite Kanja Krishna Das? Он подошел к Jiva Goswami и спросил, ты пригласил Kanja Krishna Das? Said yes, yes, I went to his place. Jiva Goswami сказал, да, да, я был у него. 
Okay, tell me where it is. So he told him, and Rupa Goswami went to that place. Hmm? So when he arrived there, then Kanja Krishna saw him, but he did not smile. Hmm? So Rupa Goswami bowed down to him. Rupa Goswami bowed down to Kanja Krishna. He said, Oh, my dear Vaishnava Thakur, I must have made some offense to you. Hmm? He said, No, 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 no. He said, No, no, I think I have made some offense to you because you did not come to the Mahaprasad and the Kirtan today. Have I somehow hurt your feelings? So then Kanja Krishna said, Oh, the other day I was walking and when I came you began to laugh at me. Rupa Goswami said, I did not even see you. When did you come? Only I remembering I was chanting and remembering how funny Krishna is and laughing. And then suddenly everything disappeared. So then Kanja Krishna he realized, oh, he did not make offense to me, but I made offense to him. By thinking he was laughing at me. Sometimes you can make offense by paranoia. Huh? So then Kanji Krishna does it. Oh, now I realize. Actually, I made offense to you. And Kanji Krishna does bow down to him. Please forgive me. Rupa Goswami bowed down to him. No, you please forgive me. And they're both bowing down to each other. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. <laughs> So then Rupa Goswami said, I only believe that you forgive me if you come to the festival and take prasada. We have saved some prasada for you. So then he bought him there and gave him a plate of very uh, delicious transcendental prasada and made him eat. So then Kanja Krishna Das said, now you should take prasadam. And then he served Rupa Goswami and gave him prasadam. And with, with tears in their eyes they embraced each other. So the relationship between Vaishnavas should be very loving like this. Hmm? What to, this uh, history is there to teach us what to speak of knowingly making an offense. Be very careful even that you don't unknowingly offend or hurt the feelings of someone. And when you have such attitude, such a caring attitude to all the devotees, only then when you chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, then the love for Krishna can appear. Don't think that I am a great personality, I am very learned, I am very advanced. Even Srila Rupa Goswami experienced the break in his the devotional experience due to an unintentional offense. Actually, Rupa Goswami cannot make offense to anyone. He's always under the control of Krishna's internal potency. But the Leela has, Krishna has made this Leela take place to give the caution to us. Actually, 
все это происходит только для того, чтобы дать урок нам. Our most beautiful Sri Satinandan Gohari has also given a perfect example. И наш самый прекрасный Сатинандан Гора Хари дает нам тоже. Once Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Was in Jagannath Puri decided I want to travel to Vrindavan. So, you know, he used to live in Navadvip until the age of 24. And all the devotees in Navadvip were very attached to him. So when he, in the night, secretly he ran away from home, took sannyas. And then he went to Jagannath Puri. Everyone was in shock. And at the time of the Ratyatra festival of Puri from Bengal, they all came to see him. But he told them, oh, when the Chattomasya is over, the four months of the austerities during the rainy season, you should all return back to Bengal. Но Махапрабху сказал им, до конца Чатурмаси вы все должны вернуться назад в Бенгали. So, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's most close associate, Gadada Pandit. Самый близкий спутник Чайтани Махапрабху, Гададара Пандит. When he came to Puri, then he made a vow. I am taking Chetra Sanyas. Chetra Sanyas means the vow that you will live in a holy place and you will never ever take a step out of that holy place. Гададара Пандит, прибыв в Джаганата Пури, однажды он дал обед, что он примет Кшетра Саньясу, что он никогда не покинет Джаганата Пури. So, Гададара Пандит был so attached to Chaitanya Mahapu. The reason he took Kshetra Saniyas was not due to being attached to Jagannath Puri. It was so that Chaitanya Mahapu couldn't send him back to Bengal with the other devotees. So he could stay with Chaitanya Mahapu. This is why he took the vow. That was the inner purpose, the intention. Причина, по которой Гададара Пандит принял Кшетра Саньясу, это было не то, что он привязан к Джаганата Пури или к Кшетра Дхаме, это то, что он не хотел, чтобы Чайтанья Махапрабху отправлял его назад в Бенгалию. But now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to go to Brindavan. And he, because of his vow of Kshetra Saniyas, he wasn't able to go with him to Brindavan. Но сейчас Чайтанья Махапрабху собирается отправиться во Вриндаван, и теперь Гададара Пандит стоит перед сложностью, потому что он не может покинуть Пури и отправиться во Вриндаван, так как он принял Кшетра Саньясу. So, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was leaving, Gadada Pandit was had tears in his eyes and he was following him. И когда Махапрабху он шел по направлению к Вриндавану, Гададара Пандит со слезами на глазах долгое время. And he took steps outside of Kshetra Mandal, the dam of Jagannath Puri. И он уже собирался выйти за пределы Кшетра Мандалы. He broke his vow due to attachment to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Он даже нарушил свой обед. But as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came north, he had to cross one river. И когда Махапрабху отправился на север и собирался переправиться через реку. And there he said to Gadada Pandit. Он сказал Гададара Пандиту. Look, you have transgressed your vow. Посмотри, ты. And I have allowed it. Because by this you have shown your love, I allowed you to follow me. Because by this you have shown your love for me, so I accept. I didn't check you. And you have left the service of Tota Gopinath also. Gadada Pandit said, the only reason I made my vow was to be with you, so what's the use of the vow if I cannot be with you? And I may have left the service of Tote Gopinath, but only seeing your lotus feet for one second is worth more than millions of services to Gopinath. So then, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said to him, Love can 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 transgress all mariyada. Love can transgress all social etiquettes and all rules and regulations. Mahaprabhu said, "Любовь может 
нарушит любую мариаду, любые, любые правила и, и предписания. Love goes beyond all rules. Любовь находится за э, пределами э, любых правил. But prem, love itself has its own mariada, its own rule. Но у према и у любви есть свои собственные правила. And the one rule of prem is tatsuka suki bhav. И одно из правил. Э, it is not about your happiness. It is about the happiness of the, the beloved. Когда вы заботитесь о счастье своего вас. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to him, if you want to come with me. Do you want to come with me for my happiness or for your happiness? Because I told you I want to go alone. And then Gadara Pandit's voice was choked, he could not speak. And then Chaitanya Mahapu stepped onto the boat and crossed the river and Gadara Pandit fainted and fell to the ground unconscious. Вступил на лодку и переправился на другой берег, и в этот момент Гададарапанди упал, потерял сознание. So Mahaprabhu set out, and he began traveling north, and he came through Bengal. Mahaprabhu стал двигаться на север, он прошел через Бенгалию. And he got as far as the village of Kanai Natchala. Он прошел через лес и пришел в деревню, которая называлась Канайначал. On the way he came to a village called Ram Kelly. По дороге он зашел в деревню, которая называлась Ram And there he met Sanatan Goswami. И там встретился Sanatan Goswami. Sanatan Goswami noticed that thousands of people had started to follow Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all chanting the holy names. Sanatan Goswami заметил, что тысячи людей сопровождают Махапрабху, воспевая святое имя. He said. Brinda bona a yatra a nahi pari pati. Oh Mahapu, this is not the way to go to Brindavan with a big crowd of different people with different moods. Because unless you're with people who have to share the same mood as you, your own mood will not be portioned, nourished. You should be with people who are like-minded. Brindavan a nahi pari pati. Следуя по Brindavan, сопровождаемый множеством людей, находящихся в другом настроении, не позволит тебе испытать настроение свое собственное. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued from Ram Kali to Kanai Natchala, but there he remembered the words of Sanatan Goswami. He turned round and he came back to Jagannath Puri. Но Chaitanya Mahaprabhu он продолжал свой свой путь и до деревни Kanai Natchala, и потом он вспомнил слова Sanatan Goswami. Он повернул и вернулся. So the first time Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tried to go to Brindavan, it was not a success. He got a certain distance and he had to come back. So when he came back, he met with Gadada Pandit. And he, he said that actually my journey to Brindavan was not successful. Мое путешествие во Вриндаван не было успешным. And I know the reason. И я знаю причину. It was not because of the words of Sanatan Goswami actually. He said it is because when I was leaving, I hurt your feelings, and this is why I was not successful. Я просто чувствовал твои, я понимал, что ты чувствуешь, и поэтому я. So even Chaitan, so even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, being supreme Lord Himself, He say I tried to do something and it failed. Because I hurt the feelings of a devotee. And even Mahaprabhu, who is the supreme Lord, he did not achieve success because he felt the feelings of his devotee. Therefore, today we are discussing the Nam Rahasya, the confidential mysteries of the Holy Name. This is why we are discussing the Nam Rahasya. So there are ten anti-loving dispositions that must be relinquished. Attitudes. And the first one, Satam Ninda Namna Paramam Aparadam Bitanute. Don't hurt the feeling of any devotee. Не, 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 не
And if you can do this, then the door becomes open, the clouds disappear, and the sun of the holy name will shine in your life and reveal everything. Если вы, вы, если вы очень внимательны и соблюдаете это правило, то э, тучи э, аппарата не разойдутся, и солнце святого имени оно засияет на небосводе. So, but you'll also have to avoid the other nine obstacles. We'll explain one by one. Э, мы должны соблюдать и все остальные девять, э, которые будут объяснены одно за другим э, следующим. Санут Кумар Ки Джей! Narad Rishi ki jai. Sanat Kumar is speaking this to Narad Muni. Sanat Kumar говорит это на радио. Sutra Goswami ki jai. Shonaka Rishi ki jai. And the history is being told by Sutra Goswami to Shonaka Rishi. Yeah, the story was being told by Sutra Goswami to Shonaka Rishi. In the Padma Purana ki jai, which was written by Shila Vyasadev ki jai. Sri Hari Nam Prabhu Ki Jai And who is explaining the Padma Purana? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to his associates on the beach in Jagannath Puri. So we will continue to explain how Mahaprabhu is speaking about the holy name to his associates in Jagannath Puri. We will continue tomorrow morning. Prebrajan Ki Jai Prebrajan explaining this all to us.